2023 is the year that I get my life together, so let's start by finally reading my TBR books. Hi, I'm Kat, and I own books from like a decade ago that I haven't read yet, and then I still want to read them, but then new books come out, and then I don't read the old books, and then I feel bad about not reading the old books, and then I only read like 25 books a year these days, and so basically I, I just need to read the books. So that's what this vlog series is for. The aim is that I will hopefully be accountable enough to you guys that I will read more books and then like watch less TV and stuff because I watched a lot of TV and movies last year so if I replace some of that time with reading time I should read more. We are kicking this series off with a Lee Bardugo double special um, and I'm cheating a bit because one of those books is not on my currently owned TBR because it comes out in three days but to be fair I have been waiting for Hellbent for like three and a half years. That, that is far too long to wait for what's supposed to be like a seven book series for book number two. But in the meantime, Rule of Wolves, um, still haven't read this. I started it at the end of last year. I didn't get very far in and then I went off to SA for three weeks and didn't bring it with me. So I'm going to read this first and then my reward will be Hellbent. Basically I have been putting this off for the longest time because of the two finales of Lee Bardugo's that I have read so far. I either hated the ending or was disappointed and my ships did not end up together. So I've been terrified about the ending of this one because who's going to die? Um, who's not going to end up together? Maybe she'll like do a 360 and surprise... It'd be a 180, wouldn't it? do a 180 and surprise me and maybe everything will be happy. But that doesn't seem her MO. I love, I love Nikolai and Zoya and Nina, so go read this. Now for the vlog series, I have like a hundred or so TBR books that I, I just want to read them because I want to be the type of person where I can just like go out and buy a book and then read it immediately and not have other books at home waiting for me. I've been working on the past few years on getting the TBR number down, so if I can get it down to, I don't know, like somewhere between 60 and 70 this year, good. I have a whole bunch more books in my room, but basically the next books I want to read are on my TBR cart in here. And at the end of the vlog, I am going to choose three of these for you guys to pick my next read. However, because I suck at like filming and editing and like getting things up on time, it probably won't be the next book I read, it'll be like the book after that. So yeah, now I'm about to get up and not read because I have to go off to an audition. I got the roll. It's an unpaid student film, but I still got it. It's also really hot today. How much of the first book did I forget? Because it's chapter three and they're already talking about how the Darkling has already returned and has been in a sun cell. Um, like, I had been spoiled enough that I knew, like, there was something happening with him. But he was, he was brought back in the last book by a bloodthirsty state with a penchant for bees. That was one of the three that were in the desert. Thing. Did I really forget that much of the book that I forgot that they had brought the Darkling back in King of Scars? I really do think I had just forgotten this. He'd seen a man long dead resurrected. How did I forget that? The townspeople fell into deep bows. The Suli did not. They recognized no king. But will they recognize a queen in Zoya? How long am I gonna have to wait for Nikolai and Zoya to like finally be together? There's a lot of pages in this book. I'm like Princess Airy three. Um I'm sure she's probably gonna end up being a ally, an ally. But I don't remember her from the first book, like that first chapter about her sister. I was very confused. I really forgot everything about the first book. Nina and Hayne, are they, are they going to be something? Because I'm still not over this, but 
I remember a little bit about her, so I would ship this. Excuse me? Excuse me? Who is this? And did Lee and the TV show writers who named General Kurgan, aka the Darkling in the show, consult on this? Is there a connection that we should actually be like looking for here? Or did someone mess up in the naming department? Um, yeah. What? Enjoy the lovely just washed and still wet hair. But I just saw that apparently what was supposed to be a seven book series initially is now only a trilogy. The Ninth House books, there's only gonna be three of them now. I swear to God, when she first announced it and everything, she was like, I have seven planned books in this series. They were never like officially confirmed, but she said seven. Now we're only getting three. Essential viewing because I'm only four minutes and 55 seconds into this video. And I was already like, who's that? What? Who, who is this person? That happened? Oh, really forgot a lot of that book too. Just know I loved it. Nina loved who Hain became when they were alone together and then she like dissects what like Hain is looking like and stuff and then Nina found herself studying the movement like a piece of fine art. If they're not together by the end of the book. This whole section, yes, love Nina. Um, and then, I hope she finds someone worthy of her. I only want the best for Hain. You, Nina. You are the best. Thank you to whatever killed the office Wi-Fi today. And now I'm back home and I didn't have to rush to the bookstore after work. I went on work hours instead. Hellbent. And you know, she's quite thick, which is good because we waited three years for this. And now I need to wait a few more days. But now that I have this in my hand, I will be more motivated to finish Rule of Wolves. I almost forgot to mention, I got into the bookstore so early that they had to go out the back and open the boxes that had just come in for this because they hadn't had a chance to unpack it yet. I shouldn't watch Tessa's vlogs. One, two, three, three, one. In classic cat fashion, I have barely read over the week. It is Saturday now, and that's how far I am into Rule of Wolves. I apparently just do not have the energy to read during the week. Damn that full-time job. Well, like it's also already 3.30 on Saturday and I haven't read today at all because I slept in and then I went grocery shopping and then I filmed a bunch of TikToks. Cause you know, I wanna get up on the creating the content as well. Um, but I do have reading sprints slash interview tonight with Mel. So I will get some reading done during that. Should probably also figure out what questions I'm going to ask Mel. But that interview with Mel will be up by the time this is up, so go over and watch Sprints and Chats with Kat and Mel. You can probably hear my laptop freaking out in the background because it does not like live streaming at all. Um, but the Darkling asked for a Lena. And I didn't think they were gonna go and get Alina, but they're making a plan to do just that. Are we gonna see Alina? Cause I don't think she shows up because no one talked about her in like the little spoilers I've seen. I feel like if Alina showed up, it'd be a much bigger reaction. And I was, so I was like, we're definitely not getting Alina. But now I'm like, maybe she's gonna show up. Are we getting Alina? Did she get her powers back? That would be nice, thank you.
I didn't read today, but I saw Hamilton. I won the $10 lottery for it because I wasn't going to pay full price again because I've already seen it. And turns out our seats were front row. Love that. Had a little interaction with James Madison while he was in the debate. And then after Kate and I weren't going to stage door, we started walking off and then we heard cheers. So we're like, let's go back. We turned back, stood around. Some of the cast came out. We weren't close for a lot of it. But then the actresses that play Peggy Mariah and Angelica came out and the actress who plays Peggy Mariah's family was out there and they did like a little celebration for her final day in the show in Melbourne. I don't know if that means she's done with the show overall. If she's not following it to Brisbane. If she's not following it to Brisbane. But that was really special to see. And then I got to meet her afterwards. And now I need to cook and prep food for the day and go to work tomorrow. Alina's here. Alina is on the page. She is talking with Zoya and she's probably about to talk with the Darkling. How was this not a bigger deal? Like I feel like this book just, it just kind of flew under the radar somehow. Maybe the TV show was just taking so much attention. But she's here. Alina is here. So Zoya is bringing the Darkling into the room. Flanked by sun soldiers, she led him across the yard and up the stairs. Wipe your feet, Alina said. He stilled at the sound of her voice, then obeyed. Zoya met her eyes and Alina winked. Any little victory. Oh my god, my dark leaner heart. I know we're not supposed to ship them anymore, but I, I can't help it. And thinking about Jessie Mae Lee delivering that line as well. Oh, they'd kill it. Oh yeah, and Mal's there as well, but I don't really care about him. But I can't get over that word choice. Not, not even like, then he did it, then he wiped his feet. Or like he begrudgingly did it or whatever. Obeyed. He obeyed her. I didn't sacrifice my power, it was taken from me. Then give it back, get it back. Like, find wherever it is, if, unless it's like in all of the Sun Soldiers, and take it back. Cause like, I'm like half agreeing with Alina, and then half agreeing with the Darkling. Cause that was an answer to his question. Is it the life you'd have chosen if you hadn't sacrificed your power? Much better ending if she hadn't sacrificed her power. 
the Darkling's back. He's on the run. Alina is going back to Karazim with Mal. I've read fan fictions with this setup before. I swear to Godly, if you killed David. David. What was the reason? What was the reason? Jenya deserves to be happy. Kaz is here. It's like one of those like season finales on a TV show where like just everyone randomly shows up. Jesper and Wylan live happily together in the suburbs. Adorable. I really don't care about Mayu's POV. Like there was already too many POVs with Nikolai, Zoya and Nina. And then they've gone and added two more in the second half. I got my Invisalign on today, so we'll see what I sound like with these in now. Like they're all fine, but I have some bumps on them, so that's supposed to help pull the teeth places. And it's just the two front bumps that are like annoying. Because now there's literally like my gum on the inside. Now it's an indentation of where those bumps are because I already have an overbite. But anyway, reading. I'm here, I have a, I'm on page 402, I think I have like oh, a little less than 200 pages to go. Yilva is sobbing over her daughter's broken body. Not again, Lee. This cannot happen again. Han better be fine. One, Queen Zoya! Yes, I love this. And then she's gonna marry Nikolai and then Nikolai will still be king, it all works out. Um, and then two, I'm now holding out hope that Hain is still alive because Rasmus did agree to peace and a treaty. So I'm thinking hopefully that like Han's death was a setup and Rasmus was in on it because Joran wasn't in the room either when it happened. People just found her like that. So I'm hoping it was all staged, he's on her side, and her faking her own death is the only way for her to get away from her family so she can run off with Nina and be happy. Better be it. Is this Rasmus Han? And then she tailored herself to look like him? And is the other hands body Rasmus it's a lot of work <sighs> thank god Han's gonna be king and then they'll marry Nina and then Nina will be queen as well Queen Nina Queen Zoya we're, we're working on Shuhan I want to see that not most of what have happened in here so Lee has confirmed this is a duology and Six of Crows is a duology. But this ends on essentially a cliffhanger. And like in the interview that she just did when she was speaking about all her books promoting Hellbent, she said she has no plans any time in the near future to write another Grisha book. So why flip that there? That could have this could have just ended at Zoya's coronation. Final thoughts, it's probably like a three-star because it just took so long to get through. Still not happy that Lee, you know, killed someone. Like, David didn't deserve that. But out of all of her series endings so far, I think this is my favourite. You know, because Alina's still around. Alina, at the end of the book, she is sitting in the palace. And no one wanted to talk to Mal. So, you know, that's better. Um, and then Hayne survived. Though, whatever their new name is going to be, they survived. If she decides to write that third book, I will read it. Okay, now we are switching this one out for this one. Finally. I sat down to read. I'm on page five, which is actually only page three because of, like, words. But I can hear the neighbor's kid playing the recorder.
can't believe that's a thing they still do in schools. Who was like, yes, every like year, what was it, four? Kid needs to learn the recorder and annoy the shit out of everyone around them. I definitely misread this as Chris Olsen. He would be an interesting character in this series. Middle part, she's definitely a Gen Zer. Comfort was the drug she hadn't understood until it was too late and she was hooked on cups of tea and book lined shelves. Mood. Narnia mention. So I'm on page like 45 and it's still like the beginning of the book, but I feel like nothing's really happened so far and I don't feel like there's going to be anything happening like in the near future of this. And I'm okay with that, which is weird. I'm like, I'm just enjoying the ride. So why am I okay with it? Like, it doesn't feel like it's dragging here, but it felt like it was dragging in Rule of Wolves. Darlington's back! And he has longer hair now, and he has horns. Welcome back, Darlington. This is what we waited three years for. Okay, so I had skimmed that page a little bit before I made that last clip. Um, and then I'm reading the in-between now. A glow stick. A glow stick. Darlington's cat was singed because he wanted to get to Darlington in the circle. The poor cat. It is Monday the 23rd and I have taken the day off work because I have switched my public holiday day from this Thursday to today. But then tomorrow I am actually using my hours to take off work because it's filming week. I edited a YouTube video this morning and then I'm about to leave to head to set. I am playing a young teacher in a student pilot and we'll see how I go talking with these in. Um, they're gonna try and get it on TV, so, you know, my acting TV debut, maybe with these lovely things in, they still feel weird to talk in, but they don't hurt anymore. They'll hurt again on Thursday morning when I switch over the trays. But yeah, I hope to read when I get back home because I'm not bringing my book with me so I can react appropriately. Um, but let's head to set. Alex is finally talking to Darlington and Darlington says, I have appetites, Stern. They are not entirely wholesome. Um, I think me, I think he just means like murder because I haven't yet seen Lee write that kind of book yet. Also, I still have my makeup on from the shoot today. And like every time I look at my eyes, I feel like they look different to how they usually look. Even though it's literally just eyeshadow mascara and a thin line of eyeliner. Anyway, back to the book. Wait, Darlington now has fangs. It might be that kind of book. I've been seeing a lot online about the prices of books in Australia lately and people like overseas being like, holy shit, do you, do you really pay that? Um, yeah, I just found the receipt of when I bought Hellbent. It's in the book. It's $33. Well, it's $32.99. Yeah, I bought this from my local bookstore because it's super easy just for me to get to. And yeah, that price is ridiculous, but small bookstores can't help that because if they don't charge that, they don't get money because they already have to pay so much for books. So I will continue to pay prices like $33 for a paperback. I justify it by buying less books from smaller bookstores rather than more books from like Big W or Kmart, which is actually probably good since I'm, you know, trying to read my TBR. Has Alex actually gone to class yet? Like, isn't that like an, isn't, don't American colleges and universities have some sort of like attendance requirement thing built in? I know in Australia, you can like skip every lecture and you're good. The cheats you should probably show up for. I don't know how many of those you can skip. I didn't go to like, almost any lecture in my last year of uni, but I went to all my jutes. So, like, 
I know Alex has, you know, bigger things to deal with. But has she gone to class? I also currently have my Invisalign tray out because I'm drinking a cup of tea. It's just so much easier to speak. I've died before, said Alex. I made it to the Borderlands. I'll make it back from this too. Michelle shook her head. You don't care, do you? She's Gen Z. Of course she doesn't care about dying. Alex is telling Mercy about, like, everything. What did she say? About the societies, Darlington, and the mess of their freshman year. I'm so excited that she's telling Mercy, like, everything. Because, yes, this is it. Like, you shouldn't keep secrets like this from your friends. Because you need your squad around you. But then I see this going two ways. One, Mercy's going to be really helpful. Or two, Mercy's going to be dead by the end of the book. Mercy ships Alex and Darlington already. And I love Mercy. She went to class. Season two. Let's go. There's a Daisy Jones and the Six trailer and we got the full Regret Me song. The song is very different to what it is in the book. So I'm very much hoping that the lyrics, baby, when you think of me, I hope it, ru it ruins rock and roll is in a different song because we need those lyrics. But other than that, I love it. I'm about to go edit my reaction to it. So go check out that video. She's in Modern Poets again. So I'm changing from, does she go to class at all to, does she have any other classes? She has not spoken about any other class except modern poet. Okay, I stand corrected. She also has a history class. Okay, and for some reason, she also takes electrical engineering 101. Random. There we go. There's the reason that Mercy was told about all of this. She's gonna be the person who watches over them when they do the ritual. Okay, we've rounded out Alex's schedule. She takes modern poets, history, the electrical engineering thing and philosophy. This guy is an acceptable age for me to date. Um, he has long hair and a rock god style that is at odds with an impeccable white suit. Can we keep him? Okay, so maybe he's not actually 30, but he looks it, so. Wait, he's incredibly fast and strong. His skin is pale white. I don't know if it's ice cold but I know what he is. Vampire. There's vampires in here. But yeah, now that I know that he's a vampire, um, yes, I do want to keep him. Also, 100%, like, this entire description of him, um, if he's not played by Jamie Campbell Bauer in the adaption, then something's wrong. She just set his house on fire. What is happening? To the lighthouse which had bored her. Same. So they're planning to do this ritual to get into hell on Halloween. But they're leaving the Halloween party early and then they're going to start the ritual at one o'clock. That would be one o'clock on the 1st of November. It's no longer Halloween. They need a vessel to put Darlington's soul in, and it has to be something that's precious to him. And they've just been talking about things. Two of them have already been destroyed. And then Alex is just like, I'm going to go get this box. Is Alex not going to be the vessel? We're in Dawes' point of view. What? Okay, I get that we're seeing, like, the moment all of them have killed someone before they're going into hell. But, like, I don't care. Like, I don't know why we needed so many pages of Trip just leaving his cousin to die in the water. And now I, I don't care about Turner's, like, flashback to whatever is going to go wrong on this case. Dawes's was the shortest, and we had already seen that before, and I actually care about Dawes. Like, can we just get to hell already? <laughs> Okay, so he's in the box now, but of course, things are going wrong. Bloody hell, Darlington. Like, they did this whole ritual, they got to hell, just for you to tell them to leave without you and come back later. 
that's not how this should work, Darlington. And she takes Spanish. And she also has a Shakespeare in the metaphysical class. That's her sixth class. How many classes do U.S. college students take? At uni, I had four a semester. And that's like the average. Like, people usually take four. If you want to speed up your degree, you can take more. If you want to do part-time, you take less. But four's the average. I just want to slap Anselm now because, like, they didn't close the door properly. So now there's, like, demons coming through. And they're like, we need to go back and finish the ritual and it'll all be fine. If Anselm just hadn't pulled them out early, they would have done it and it would have been fine. So really, they would have done their job fine, but he messed it all up. Darlington's guardian is Cosmo, his pet cat. How did I just realize that this bunny on here is Babbit Rabbit? This is Alex's rabbit. How awkward it must be to be Lauren now, because she's the only dorm mate who doesn't know anything about what's going on. So it used to just be Alex, and they're like, oh, that's that one roommate that like runs in and out and stuff. But now Lauren's the minority, and like Alex and Mercy are always going out and doing mysterious things and stuff. And then Lauren just must feel very separated and awkward. The fact that there's only that much left of the book and we are still not at the November part from the beginning of the book. Like it's what, November 1st, maybe even 2nd by now? We need to circle back around. So this is very weird to read. So even though I know that they're talking about a different Chapel Street, there is a Chapel Street not far from me that's very different in vibes to what this Chapel Street is. It is 9am and I have already been to the city and back because my boss decided that today could be a work from home day instead, but didn't tell me. Pro tip, don't be like that boss. Tell people when they don't have to waste money going into the city and back. But on the bright side, it's February 1st, which means it's Harry Styles' birthday and I see him on concert this month. Yeah, that's right, he is leaving America. Finally. We're back around to where we started the book. Her, gentleman demon. When are these two gonna get together? I don't care if it's demon form, human form, both together. When is it happening? It's Darlington's parents who are dead. My mum continues to have the worst timing. Like, back in the day. She walked in as I was watching the OC finale, as I was watching the Gossip Girl finale, as I was watching the Heart of Dixie finale. She walked in like last month when I was watching Matilda and we didn't know if the escapologist was about to catch his wife. And now Darlington has just fallen through the ceiling and my mum called. Well, now what makes sense why Anselm was like so annoying and stopping the ritual but of course, Alex is also a doorway, because of course she is. The box shattered. I'm right, aren't I? Alex is gonna like house him until she can get him into his own body. Uh-uh. No. Nope. No. No. I had a terrifying, ni very reoccurring nightmare as a child that was quite like this it wasn't a rabbit it was like a, a dingo kangaroo thing and then i did have or then i did also have nightmares after having to study donnie darko no thank you bingo called that one since i knew we needed to have something to bring his soul out i've seen this before look at i got <gasps> on brand but yeah, I too would have the first thing I do to be go get clothes if I had spent that long naked. Why do I keep getting distracted? Like, I really want to read this. Darlington is back. This is what we've been waiting two books for. But now I'm also distracted by a conversation in the group chat about really weird Spotify made for you playlists. Like literally just 
type in made for you in Spotify search and then just see how weird the playlists are. And then also about how like Lucy and I are getting old and we're both a lot closer to 30 than we are 20. I'm actually going to a 30th birthday party later this year. We're in Darlington's POV. Does that mean book three will be in both POVs? Darlington, where did your manners go? Alex is downstairs. You know what I'm so glad about is that the book doesn't end like when they get Darlington back. Like there's so many books where it would just be like, okay, and we got him back, end. Like, no, we still have pages to go. And there was no like jump forward in time either. We saw what happened immediately afterwards. Thank you, Lee. Not me thinking, oh, they're all going to bed in separate bedrooms. Like I just want Alex and Darlington to be together. And then on the next page, Alex is sneaking out of the room into Darlington's room. Now I've read that story before. So like, they're bound now. They might as well be mates. But Lee has this thing of like not giving us what we want. So will Alex be like, oh, I feel bad if I'm going to kiss you and you're bound to me. Like, you guys were attracted before, so just hurry up and kiss already. Darlington, what did you just say about Alex? His manners do not exist in his head. Could you just hurry up and do that then? But I like this life better. Better than what I was living before. Better than a world without magic. I think I've been waiting my whole life for the moment someone would see something in me that wasn't ordinary. Mercy is us. I too would jump at the chance to do anything magical. What do you want at the end of all of this, Alex? He asked. Freedom. Money. A week-long nap. Mood. I know this isn't a romance, but they couldn't have kissed at least once in this book. Like, I liked everything else. It just, you know, could have used, like, that romance that we've been teasing for the last two books and now we gotta wait like what another three and a half years for book three why does this have to end like angel season five the last words of ninth house are who's ready to go to hell and the last words of hellbent are let's give them hell so book three is going to end with the word hell this was so good i was so intrigued by the mystery and like the magic and everything happening and i care about the characters and they obviously care about Alex and Darlington. Just sort your feelings out and get together already. The thing about being in Darlington's head is that we know he likes her and we know she likes him. But neither of them have said that to each other. <clears throat> Hate that trope. I love Dawes and I love Mercy as well, I hope. We haven't scared off Mercy for good. I think she just needs some time to recover. And then she can come back. Turner's interesting. I can like take or leave him. He's just, he's helpful being a cop and just needing to get to things and then trip i guess he's the comic relief he'll definitely be the comic relief in book three he's like the newbie vampire so i need book three but i don't need it in the same way that i needed book two from book one like end of book one was very much a cliffhanger and i'm like oh my god are they going to get him back and stuff and this is oh my god we've read like 800 pages and they still haven't gotten together. So I need book three. And I'm not kidding when I say this ends like season five of Angel where they opened up the gates of hell and all of the demons are coming through and they have to fight them. At least there isn't a dragon here. Well, at least we don't think that flying thing is a dragon. Could be a dragon. Just as long as in book three there isn't, you know, the bad guy named Twilight. I'm going to give this four stars. If Alex and Darlington had acted on their feelings, it probably would have been a five. Since we did get Darlington's POV in this, very interested to see if we will continue to get his POV in book three. And my guess for the cover, since, you know, we've got Alex's snake here and then Babbit Rabbit here, I think book three is going to have like a ram on it. So Lee, I hope you're working on Ninth House 3 instead of like something else and like I know Shadow and Bone Season 2 is coming out shortly so let's focus you know just fully hard on Ninth House 3 before 
Shadow and Bone season three. I know everything's been getting cancelled these days, so will there be a season three? Will it just they're finishing the original they're finish they're finishing the Grisha trilogy in this season, so will they just cancel it and then finally make the Six of Crows TV show? I'm sure I will have many more thoughts about this going forward, but that's all I can think of off the top of my head right now. Let's discuss down below. Okay, now for you to vote for which of my TBR books I should read and vlog about next. I have three to pick from and you guys can either vote by commenting down below or I'm going to try and put a poll up in the community tab. I've never used the community tab before, so I would really like if you guys could go vote over there. So... Book one, Stepsister by Jennifer Donnelly. I was sent this by the publisher ages ago and I still have not read it. It is a Cinderella retelling, obviously, and it's about one of the stepsisters. Option two, Unearthed by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. I have owned this for so long. It's even signed. I met both of them and I still haven't read it. I own book two as well, so if I did vlog it, I would probably read book one and book two. And then the last option, Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I have yet to read this. I am pissed at this. This doesn't come off. Um, but I have read Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones. Loved those. I do not currently own Carrie Soto because I'm waiting for it to come out in the small version. So vote which one you think I should read down below or in the community tab. If you don't have any thoughts on Rule of Wolves or Hellbent or any of the books I should read, leave me a black heart emoji down below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and stick around and watch some other 